Hiya, how are you? Um, okay, so today I'm going to show you how to make... It's a twig and tail petal dress. You can get it for free on the website. Um, I do believe you have to put a code in, but you can get the code off the website or the twig and tail like pattern group on Facebook. But check it out. Um, beautiful patterns. But the twig, the petal dress is really, really cute. Um, Rachel at Sewn Fabric in St. Austell has kindly given me a metre of this gorgeous fabric. One metre. And also some lining fabric. This dress is... Um, reversible so it's double sided so I've gone for plain yellow on the reverse. Now out of this meter I was able to cut out a six to nine and an eighteen to twenty four month size so that's really good. Um so you need three pieces of each so you've got your two front panels which are curved you'll see right at the end and then a back piece so it's quite it's basically six pieces and you do the same in the lining colour which I've got all cut out and then what I've done on the front pieces I've marked where the poppers will go from the pattern and then I don't know if you can see it in the sunshine there's um I've just put a square of interfacing where the poppers will go to reinforce the fabric so it's nice and strong so the first thing is you get your back piece I don't know, I'll iron it all so nicely and then I go and scrumple it all up. Um, it's part of the lining piece as well, isn't it? So let's pop that on top of that because I do that one stuck in. Right, so you do it in stages. So you get your back piece out first and it all looks the same now and I've jumbled it all up and made it a right mess. I had it all laid out nice and flat. Right, so pins are useful here. It's all done on your normal sewing machine. I just do normal straight stitches, so I don't do zigzags and all that because it's plain cotton and it would sand it really well. Um, so it's a petal, so there's your curve, there's your armhole, so armhole to armhole, right sides facing. And I pop a couple of pins in there. And then same on the other side. When you look at the twig and tail pattern, they do have really good... Um, instructions more long-winded i'd say than other groups like brindle and twig um they are very good very comprehensive with diagrams and um you know written instructions and also gives you a lot of information i'm going to do the lining at the same time um they give you a lot of information about upcycling like fabrics and um and it, it goes into full depth so it tells you what to do if you're using a thicker fabric so you could like in winter time you could make this with um, a thicker, more felted woolen fabric and it'd be a really warm top. You can also make this in tunic length. It gives you different lengths and it goes from birth. I think it right up until 12. Um, so you have dress, this is dress, dress length. You could also have tunic length. So if you make it out of a thicker fabric, it would be a really nice top for winter. If you don't have a thin fabric, you, it looks nice with a long sleeve top underneath it as well. So it's quite a versatile dress, really, or tunic, whichever one you want to make. Right, so um, let's sew this one up. I'm using the recycled thread I talked about the other day, if you saw the video. Um, nice and environmentally thoughtful. I'm using 2.5 stitch length, so the seams are good. I'm just going to plug in my iron, because once I've done this bit, I'm going to iron my seams nice and flat. Okay, quarter of an inch. So there is in place. Nice and quick and easy. It's a beautiful kudos. I made it a few fabrics. Um did it in a Liberty, which was lovely. And I also made a set for um my thread undone. As long as you didn't pull that through enough. Um, I made it a set for um, some triplets once and they all had like different colourways but they looked so so cute and it was a really really pretty. It's on my um, Facebook page Cornish Made and also on my Instagram Mandy KH are pictures of the um, triplets wearing them. They just look so adorable. 
there's like one picture of them all in um like going into mum's cupboard not liking let's not let that chew up i think my tension was a bit off then my mistake these things happen so um who watched great british sewing bee last night and saw that our gem left it's really sad i liked her from the beginning um yes working fine um yeah i liked jen so now my favorite to win is julia i love her she's such a precise sewer um and she has some amazing ideas and i just love her um creativity she's um lovely well deserved to be a winner i was um i don't dislike leah i think she's um she's definitely grown and learned a lot about sewing in her time there um i just hope she doesn't get too flustered next week on the final because she does tend to get a bit flustered and a bit panicking i think that might let her down which is a bit scary because um, they've all done so well. Ricardo is, um, I found him a little bit annoying in the beginning, but not like I don't really know him. Um, but he has some amazing ideas and his tweed outfit was gorgeous. Um, I really liked that. So he's a very deserved winner. So next week is gonna be, it's gonna be really good because it's, who knows who's gonna win? It's just gonna be, um, I can't pick it. Although if I had to choose, I would like Juliet to win. Because um, she's just lovely. And I really like her. So. Um, yeah, so i just got to iron my seams a minute. Yeah, it's, um, it's funny, isn't it? A lot of people talk about the Great British Sewing Bee and I wonder what it would be like to be on it. But I'd be too scared. I'd be really scared of all the pressure it's just you know it's very different sewing in your own house to um being on tv having the presenters walking around and watching you and just feel like you're under scrutiny all the time so hats off to them all that have done it because they've done an amazing job in my opinion anyway i think they're um massive been a lot, there's a lot of criticism over this year's great british sewing bee about how it's not been the same as it has been before but I've quite enjoyed it. I love sewing, so to me it's just like a perfect programme, really. Um, you get some amazing ideas off it. Um, yeah, so I, I quite enjoy it. This is the oh-so-boring bit of sewing, is ironing. But it is actually really important to get your seams nice. Because it will sew together so much nicer with the seam ironed. Um, and it's... You know, sometimes you can get away with it and just wing it. But when you turn, because this dress is reversible, when you turn it through, you have to turn it through these shoulder bits. They can become like tubes and your the front bits come through to the back. So you kind of don't want to have anything in your way, really. So it is better to. When I first started sewing, I hated um, ironing. <laughs> I just think, what do I have to iron for? But um, it's much better to. Okay. Don't open up, please. Yeah, like in the, uh, back in the day, like early sewing days, I probably just pinned these in place and not even thought about ironing. Oh, no, I'm just going to crease that really badly. So I normally stand up to do it, but I didn't want to go off shot, really. And you end up seeing nothing whilst I'm ironing. Right, that's those bits done. Okay. Right, so now the next bit is right sides together. It's such a funny shape. It looks really daunting. When I first made it, I was like, oh my god, what on earth am I doing? I don't I don't even get how this is gonna work. But once you do it, you're like, oh okay, I get it now. So Right sides of your fabric together. Move that back a bit. Don't catch my hands on it. Push you back a bit. Right, so what you're going to do now is pin it 
so you sew the neck and the arms now on the pattern you get to um put a notch in your fabric part way down the front of the the sweepy bit the curve of the front of the dress um and you don't go any further down than that because you need to be able to turn it again later so a couple of little notches line up your notches from your lining and your outer and pin there pin your corner because well pin as much as you like i just tend to pin these bits because that's where i like to concentrate so make sure your seams are still nice and flat and level with each other and i put a pin in there just to keep that in place and the other side Nice and flush. Right, there we go. And then again, down the other side, so on the corner, and where that notch is again. So, come on, line up, please. On the um, armholes, you just make sure they're nice and lined up, obviously. And it all sews together really nicely. And already you'll start to then, when you finish this bit, you start to see the dress take shape already. It's such an easy design. Right, not just lined up. So then you, obviously your armholes need to be... If you've got notches on your armholes as well, so make sure they're lined up. I mean, you can pin these one at a time and sew one at a time. I just pin it all now because I've made these a few times and I'm quite comfortable with the pattern now so I'm kind of used to it that one. other arm hole and then we can say the arm holes and the neck hole together so you're joining the front and the back with the right side facing that's one to check because sometimes you sew it together and you realize you put one round the wrong way and then you're stuck okay all right so i'll do the front bit first i think that's a nice long sweet bit so quarter of an inch again i always go back one just to anchor that stitch. Might turn the speed up a bit. Is it through? Yeah, this dress is, um, I did it in a really bright Michael Miller once, Michael Miller fabric, and it was all brights and purples with deers and trees and stuff on it, but gorgeous fabric, and it looks so nice. I've got it in linen, it comes out quite nice with linen. I haven't tried it yet in any of the thicker fabric, so I might try that actually. Maybe I'll make some now for gifts for winter time. Let's see. How to pin yourself. <laughs> the amount of times I actually lodge a pin into my fingers and thumbs and then it loads. Not fun. Just make sure it's lined up. Just keep going all the way around the next line. So let's get onto the front of the dresses now. And you go back down to the notch, which is on the other side. All the way down. That's not looking like it's lining up as well as it should. Just to make sure. That's better. Obviously you can mark your little notches as well, you don't have to snip them, you might snip too far and cut into what would then be your seam allowance. <laughs> okay, on these bits, I'll do it as I go, I cut the corners off so when you pull it through they poke up really nice and square. That 
there we go and then also I put little snippets in the curves but I do that when I'm in the armholes um just so that when you put it through and iron it flat you don't get any like crumpling up because you're yeah going in a circle and the fabric naturally doesn't want to lie in that direction so just put waste these bits in my um, pins think how dangerous is it to have a cup on your sewing desk and have a drink and you go and throw bits of thread into your cup and then you go and take I did it once a bit of a funny story really I um put my coffee cup on the table I was throwing threads away as I was sewing and then lo and behold went to take a drink I swear to God, I had a spider in my coffee cup because I freaked out, spat coffee everywhere, and <laughs> made myself look a right idiot. I need to discover it was thread in my coffee cup. I dumped thread in my drink, and I somehow, got, when I put my mouth, thought I had a spider in my cup. Scared um, myself silly. Quite silly, really, but um, yeah. <laughs> Only I could do that. I do that. Okay. Other one. If I can find it. Okay. There we go. So this thread's coming out nice. It's not. It's nice. I like it. I'm glad they've done a recycled plastic thread. It's good for the environment. I'm really pleased that I'm not able to get this now. Is, um, it's good to see that they can put some of those plastic bottles to use and add more floating around the ocean. So if we all buy more of this thread, that will help. Not sure it seems like some flush there. falling out so notch all your curves like I said before so um when you fold it through it fits nice and flush and it will sit nicely when you iron it it will kind of stiff not it will feel a bit tight and pull a bit so when you do toys and you just uh, clip all your curves um other one other one so yeah, I have to say thank you to Rachel at Sewing Fabric for this beautiful, gorgeous fabric. I had a little check actually when I was in there because I like it quite a lot. And she's got about five metres left. So um, you can purchase this farmyard fabric if you want to. She's called Sewing Fabric. She's got a Facebook page. And um, she has a shop now function on that. So you can, you can buy it without going to her shop. She um, will post it to you. But try and leave a meter for me. <laughs> I think I might have to go and get some. I'm trying to think who's having a baby next. So I can make them something with it. So I think it's quite unisex as well. I think it'll work for both genders. Um, yeah, so yeah, you can go and check out her shop. She's got loads and loads of amazing fabrics. I did a little video on um, her shop, bless her. She was doing alterations and I... Went in and <laughs> did a little, it's my favourite place to go in St Austell. I love her fabric shop. She's got sofas in there as well. So quite often when I need a bit of inspiration or I don't know what to make next, I can pop into Costa and get myself a coffee. And then I pop along to Rachel's shop and just sit on the sofa with a um, pattern book with me or you know, she's got a few there. Obviously she sells patterns and stuff as well. Or I just look at the fabrics and... Sometimes you're just inspired to make something. Sometimes just seeing what other people are buying and stuff um, inspires you. That's why social media is such a good thing, isn't it? Right, so now you're going to start to pull the dress in through. So from the back, 
you can use a pair of um hing studs if you want get these on ebay um you don't want to pull too hard and snag your fabric off. basically go through the back and you, you're going through here which is why your hemostats starts are good now i tend to grab this corner and pull that bit through and this is pulling the front of the dress through so it'll be the right side out just keep pulling and pulling and pulling and out it comes and this one you need to so these are quite good for this as well is poking that corner to get it that's why you cut the edge off the corner off to get it nice and square so it's got a nice point to it then you do that again it just looks so confusing doesn't it to the other side so um obviously this is you can fit your hand in here but on the smaller sizes that's going to be a narrower channel so you probably would need to use some of the hemostats to pull it through so you don't stretch it or catch the okay so pull that one through and then when you look at the instructions for the next bit it looks really tricky and you're kind of like but when you see it being done and you work it or you work it out yourself like, like i have to um when you realize you're like oh yeah totally see that now um but that's why it's good to share this information because um so what you've got to do now is sew up the sides of your dresses you can of course top stitch the top now if you want to but you do top stitch at the end so leave it to them if you want or do it now it's entirely up to you I leave it till the end right so if I hold this up and show you you see what you've got so now you can see what the dress is going to look like from the front so you've got to get these side bits sewn up so you've got a front and a back and a front and a back either side of the armholes so right sides together and you've got the seam from the bottom of your armhole put that seam together pull up the front pieces to their right sides together and literally just put them together like that now I pin at the top and the middle and the bottom put more pins in if you like so I just get the bottom and you sew basically right down the length of it so all you need to do is no, no more complicated than that but when you see it in the instructions you're a little bit like <laughs> it looks a little bit confusing but this still keeps your seam inside and not visible from the outside so that's why it's done like this so I just put a couple of pins in there to keep that nice and flat and you'll see when it's done how nice it comes out and you'll be like whoa that does look so easy. When you honestly, when you see the instructions, you'll probably look a little bit. If you're especially if you're new and you're a beginner, this looks like a nice simple dress to make. When you see that bit, you're probably like, oh my god, how am I meant to do this? Get my foot pedal back where it belongs. Okay, so make sure it's nice and flush. Just so right down the length. over the seam which is actually the bottom of the arm so it's your armpit area I suppose if we give it a name and onto the lining in one fell swoop just make sure your seam is nice and flush you don't want it to um, sort of get any like, kinks in it because that will look yucky from the outside. Right, keep going. So you do the same to the other side. Do 
another drink actually. Right, that's that side done. Then we have to get the other side and do the same thing again. So find your underarm points. Make sure the right sides of the fabric are together. And pin it in place. Lovely. This is going to look so cute if you can see it now. But I'm not making this out of jersey either. I don't know how it's working, jersey, whether it holds its shape that well. It'd be worth a try. Be nice and warm. If you did it in French toast, it would be a bit firmer, wouldn't it? A couple of pins in the middle again. Keep that seam nice and flat. I could iron it as well. I don't know why I don't iron this stage, but I do iron the stage before. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, does it? No, it doesn't. Right. You're lining together. I'm going to put a pin in the middle just because that was a bit slidey last time. I felt like I was losing control of it. A bit more security. Okay. start punching up and stuff because you that interfacing isn't sticking as much as it should do you know getting a bit annoyed with that happened on another thing that i made um because you're um now giving the dress shape it is going to start punching up in areas you do have to walk so you're not catching another piece of the dress underneath and stitching that into a seam So when you pull that round the right way now, let me just show you. Put my hand. It has given you a nice hidden side seam. Can you see that? So it's take more more into a dress. Okay. So now you kind of have to tuck because you want your right sides together again to do the bottom of the dress. So I kind of just fold it over like that and all the top part of the dress is all hidden away inside. And then I line up these seams. And what you do when you sew this seam is you leave a gap for turning. Um, Cause you have to turn the dress out again because all the bits that you want on the outside or on the inside but yet again this gives you the internal seam so you won't see any of your seams you'll only have one small bit which you turn out from which you need to when you do your top stitch sew over nice and neat so it can't be seen so line it all up nice and pretty pin it all the way around Line up this seam. It's a lot of fabric, but totally worth the effort because it comes out so pretty. I wish I did it in adult sizes sometimes. <laughs> It'd be quite a woolen one, I suppose, for winter, be quite nice. You could wear it over a long sleeve top. It'd look quite nice as an adult, I think. The Twigger Tail do do adult patterns as well. They do some Pathfinder vests, which is quite nice. I made one for my son out of a woolen blanket and that came out really lovely. Not that he's worn it, because he, <laughs> he doesn't like the tractors that I put in him. Anyway, enough said about that. He's getting very independent, is our Ethan, and he's deciding what he does and doesn't like now, so 
I think my um, days of just making him anything might well be coming to a close. But he can start choosing his fabrics and stuff now. He's able to make choices. So, um, yeah, leave a look, leave yourself a little gap. So mark out a gap if you want to. I normally do it about two to three inches, just so you've got enough room to, without pulling all your stitching out. Just as a reminder to stop and start again. Okay. So you can see how I've pinned that all up, and it's from that original seam that you did. So that's come off look, that's so cheeky. It's still warm, I might just give it a quick press, see if it re-sticks. Anyway, right here goes. So from that original seam that you did before, where your notches were, start from there. around to your mark, pull the niche in, make sure this one seems nice and flat, up to my blue line that I just made. That's a water raisable pen, by the way. If you um, haven't come across them, I prefer them to the air soluble ones. Cause sometimes I mark stuff up and then I don't make it, and then when I come back, it's all gone. The water one for me works better. I have seen. Get over this seam. I have seen a pen that has um, an erasable bit on it. So if you do make a mistake, you can rub it out and then do it again. It's quite cool. I haven't tried it out yet though. Um, yeah. Handy little things with pens. I literally use it on everything: quilting, sewing, doll making, bags. I do the full work on that one. Okay. Do you know what I just did? No, I didn't. Did I? Did I just do that? No, I didn't. I thought I went through the gap. I thought I literally just didn't leave a gap, but I did leave a gap. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. To tell you to leave a gap because you need to leave a gap for turning and then look to sew through it would have been just would have been funny. Do they have a YouTube um blooper moments type collection? I don't know. They might have. Right, so now I'm gonna pull it through. For this one, make sure your pins are out, it's gonna end up stabbing yourself. And just go say about that, look, I left them there. What is wrong with me today? Right, <laughs> no, I'm not going to stab myself. So you pull the dress through the gap, nice and gentle, don't rip your seams. And then what we've got to do then is top stitch all the way around and you're done now the poppers. Um, but yeah, that's your dress made. Corners back out of the front of your dress. There we are. So now it's quite good to give it a press so all your seams are nice and flat. So when you top stitch over, it's going to go through your machine really nice and easy and so beautifully because you really don't want it to be all. And basically, what you do is you start at the bottom here where you've got your gap. When you iron it, you fold it nice in nicely and it will like lie in position for you and you sew all the way around the outside and back to the beginning again. Let's pop that in there. And then we'll give it a quick press 
and then I'll top stitch it but the pop sword and then that'll be the dress made comes out so so nice oh it's such a cute fabric I love it so with this one you could have had pink you could have had blues or greens on the other side all oh, looked really nice So when you wear this, well, when your little one wears it, they um, go out of the day and make a mess. You just turn it around the other way and you've got two dresses. So you have a nice cream. They spill it all down the front and you're like, oh my God, we're going to pop into the Tesco's on the way home and now you're covered in ice cream. Just turn the dress around the other way. Shame I can't put it on my boys because <laughs> they certainly need that. I call them dirt magnets for a reason. Come on, team. Thank you. It's so pretty. Good choice, Rachel. Good choice in fabrics, that's beautiful. And it looks so lovely with the lemon as well. I think that looks really, really nice. Probably need to give it, oh, that was a bit dangerous, wasn't it? Could give it a little press at the end, but I'll do that once I've finished filming rather than have you guys watch me iron. Well, that's no fun. Don't really need pins for this bit. Well, I don't anyway. Um, little bits on me. Keep my stitch length up to three because um because I do okay. So yeah fold it in so where it's iron to keep it flush. I always top stitch on the top so you can see it as you're going through. Because obviously you're going to generally wear this with the pattern on the outside. The laborious old sticks. This one, it's so long all the way around. But yeah, there you go. Six pieces turns into a vertical kettle dress. I'm surprised this pattern's actually free. It's such a nice pattern. I think they were charged for it, wouldn't you? So thank you, Trig and Tail, for um, giving us such a lovely free pattern. Work out the cord a bit. So we get one turn there rather than go around it. This is the next line. Over these seams. Sometimes you need to slow down a bit if it gets a bit bogged. This machine is really good for um, multiple layers doesn't tend to have a problem unless it's like police and stuff and if you have to really stay down on it. But it's one of the key things I like about this machine. Laughing machine. I might do a review of the machine actually one day and show you the functions on it. Because it loads. It does um it's got an okay one which is it means to draw in Japanese. So the machine does free motion. Um and what's interesting about it is when you press the pedal the stitch becomes wider when you take your foot the pedal becomes thinner so you literally can like scribe and scroll and when you master it it's beautiful i haven't mastered it just yet so i'm a bit of a way off that but it's still really fun to learn and i've used it in my dolls and stuff like 
really decorated on gingerbread man toys and stuff like that so I'm def I definitely enjoy using it and developing my skills with that one. Okay, we're nearing the end now. You can see my starting thread. And I realize I've just run out of um of bobbin thread. That's nice, isn't it? Just towards the end. I thought I had enough, so that's my mistake. But um That's what so is all about. Got me enough just to finish this one off. Put it back in the right way around. Amanda, can you do better? Right. Here we go. Refread the machine. And finish your seam. I like this thread, it's nice. Right, cut that back. You don't want to have the thready bits hanging off. There we go. Back stitch. And done. Okay, so now you need to do is put your poppers on, and when you drew out your pattern, you should have put your popper placements on because there is other ways of fastening this dress. Um, that's just the one that I choose. I think it's quite quick and versatile for, and the child can also manage their own clothing then as well because poppers are really easy for little ones. I can hear the dog swinging behind me. Sorry about that. That's it. A bit of thread got caught up in the stitches then and made it look a bit messy. Okay, so, pam snaps. I'm going to use... Where are the white ones then? There are the white ones. I'm going to use white. They're size 20. I tend to use size 20 generically because they work for most of what I make. If I was making prem size baby grows, I would probably go smaller because obviously they're so tiny. So you've already marked out where your popper's going to go. One, two, three. That's one side, the other side. So you two sets per side. So one, two. And one, two. It doesn't matter which way around cut them because it's reversible either way around. They have to pop, so I'll do the top. No, actually, I'll do the bottom ones first. Okay. Just like which way around you can have it. So you have the petal that way over. So on this one, I'm looking at what looks nicest. And actually, I've got to. I like that side more. It's got the piggy and the sheep and that in it. Although that one does have that nice scene. Oh, now I'm a bit torn. They can choose either way, so it doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to pop it up for me right now, won't you? Are. So. Pop that one on the mark. Bottom one on. So I buy my cam snaps via eBay. You can buy sets of them on Amazon. Um, I'm sure there's other places you can get them. That's just where I've got them myself. Um, I just buy them in multi packs of like fifty because I use quite a lot. So also make sure you put a male and a female per side so they can pop her up. If I actually did this properly and didn't make a hash up of it, we'd be laughing. Right, hold on to that. So you've got, obviously you've got to get this into your cam snapper gap. 
there we go. So many little threads coming of everything. Um, so that's that one. Then we need to do this side. So that one goes up in there. I can hear my dog snoring. He's so funny. I don't know if you can hear him. It's a long way up. Distracted by the dog snoring. How can I sleep so much, dogs? They sleep so, so much. Which I was a dog sometimes. With three children, I could do with some more sleep. That one up through that way. Going through the blue dot. And that one on the other side. And done. Petal dress made. I've got the other one to make. I won't make both now. <laughs> I'm bore you anymore. No, Jacob. Um, yeah, there you go. All poppered up. And ready to wear. Some new threads hanging off it, but there you go. One petal dress from Twig and Tail in this beautiful fabric. I love it. It's stunning. So yeah, there you go. Um, if you like my video, please like. Um, please subscribe to my page. My son says that's really important. Um, and I'll do another tutorial soon. I'm going to do one for zips. I'll put um, a zip in a cushion and make a cushion for my son's future bedroom and moving house. So I'm making him some fun things for his bedroom. Make some bunting for it soon as well, so I can show you that as well. Yeah, I'll make a cushion to show how I put a zip in a cushion. And then I'll show you more zips for different things like garments and stuff later on um, as I make things. So I hope that's okay. Hope you're having a good day. And I'll speak to you again soon. And it's not going. Don't know what I've done.